Hi sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justina. If you're new here, welcome. In today's video, I'm going to share something very near and dear to my heart, something that has been in my life since I've been a child, and that is the ancient folk art of pisanki. Now, if you're not familiar with what pisanki is, that is the art of creating Ukrainian Easter eggs, the very intricate, detailed, beautiful Ukrainian Easter eggs that you see sometimes on Instagram or occasionally here on YouTube or in people's homes. They're photographed sometimes for National Geographic, and it is an art form that's still being done today by many artists, including myself. I learned the art of pisanki from my mother and my godmother, and it's an art form that's commonly done during the time of Lent, at least in my faith tradition, in preparation for Pascha or Easter, the resurrection of Christ. Now before we begin, I'd like to ask you if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also if you think this video would be helpful to others who might be interested in the art form of Pisanki or giving it a try, to please comment below because that's how YouTube knows that this video is good content and that others might enjoy it as well. Also, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I upload new videos each week on home, decor, DIY, lifestyle, and other topics. So we, I think we have a good time on here. So I hope that you'll consider joining us and becoming a part of our YouTube fam. Okay, with all that said, let's get started on an overview of Pisanki as an art form and some traditional designs. Thank you for coming along with me as I share with you some of the pisanki I've made over the course of my adult life. Pisanki is an ancient folk art that predates Christian times. Originally, the symbols had Slavic pagan significance, but when the people of Kievan Rus received Christianity in 988, the pagan Pisanki symbols took on new Christian meaning. Pisanki comes from the word pisat, or pisati, which means to write. Symbols are written on the eggs in hot beeswax with a kiska, which is sort of like a wax pen. <laughs> The eggs are dipped into batik dye for color, and this type of dye, which means wax writing, is also used for creating wax-resistant designs on fabric. Similarly, in Pisanki, wax is used as a barrier against the dye, so whatever you draw onto the white egg will remain white throughout the dye process. Now if this seems confusing, I think it will become more clear in the tutorial I've included, which follows this tour and begins at the 440 mark. Out of the many traditional symbols and designs used in Pisanki, some of my favorites are the rose and the eight-pointed star. These are great patterns for beginners. Roses and stars are ancient symbols for Christ. Flowers symbolize love of God, and ladders signify prayer. The cross symbolizes Christ, while an X cross symbolizes St. Andrew's cross. Triangles signify the Holy Trinity. A basket weave pattern is a nod to Christ, calling his first apostles, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, to leave their lives and follow him, for Christ would make them fishers of men. Branches are associated with long life and health, Curls represent protection. Wheat signifies wishes for a good harvest and good health. Dots and circles refer to stars and the heavens. And the fish represents Christ. And if you see two letters on an egg that look like an X and a B, that's actually Cyrillic, and it stands for Christos was krese, Christ is risen. So you want to make a Ukrainian Easter egg. Well, here's where you start. You'll need a white egg. This is a jumbo egg from the grocery store. Really any egg will do. Make sure it's smooth and pretty even. You'll also need a kiska, so I use an electric one because I do a lot of eggs. What I suggest for beginners just getting a basic kiska like this. 
And remember, everything will be linked below if you're interested in giving it a try. And this is going to be what you make your designs with. If you get a non-electric Kiska, you'll also need a candle in order to heat the wax. You'll need a pencil for dividing your egg, which I believe is the most important part of the whole process. You might also find that measuring tape is handy, and of course you need wax. Now, I like to use two types of wax, strip wax, which is very easy to use, and also sapphire beeswax. Keeping a very thin wire nearby is handy because you will get clumps in your Kiska at some point. You'll also need batik dye, I have the sources linked below, and also some jars for your dye mix. Now this part is totally optional. If you want a shiny egg at the end, you're going to have to shellac it, and I like to use spray varnish. And if you want to hollow out your eggs, you're going to need an egg blower. But I have some thoughts on that. So the big question, should you take out the insides after you're finished with your eggs? A lot of people do. And I have goose eggs that already have the insides taken out. So then I have to put a little plug on them and weigh them down in order to put them in the dye. But generally for a regular chicken egg, I leave the insides intact. That's actually the traditional way to do it, to leave the insides intact. And then over time, the insides will dry up. And if your egg breaks or cracks or something like that, you might have a little bit of a smell after it's dry, but you know, it's generally not so much of a big deal. However, if you're concerned about maybe little hands getting to your eggs, or if you don't say, for example, have air conditioning and your house will get very hot in the summertime and the eggs might explode, then you might want to consider taking the insides out of your eggs. One of the reasons why I don't take the insides out is because for practical reasons, I have asthma and it's really hard for me to do it because you're really just, you know, you're putting two holes on either side of the egg and blowing out the insides. So I tend not to do it. And like I said before, that is the traditional way of, of preserving your eggs. So it's up to you. That's a personal preference, but I like to leave the insides inside. So this is the pattern we're going to be doing today, an eight-pointed star with branches and curls. So we're going to start with a regular chicken egg. I just got this from the grocery store. And we're going to plot out the lines. So we're going to make a line going around the center of the egg and just go across very lightly with your pencil. Now don't worry too much about your pencil lines because when we remove the wax, we are also going to be removing the pencil lines. Also, don't erase the lines on your egg. Just draw a new line if you make a mistake. Now we're going to divide the egg down the center vertically. And I like to put little dots on my egg first and then connect the dots. I find that to be much easier. Now that we've divided our egg into fourths or quarters, we're going to divide it into eighths. And as you can see, I'm very using a very light touch and I'm also working somewhat quickly you don't want to move too slowly or else you're going to get a jagged line, so trust your eyes. And now I'm plotting out my lines and dividing the egg in half vertically again. So that's actually going to be the side of the egg. And now I'm just going through and connecting the rest of my lines. Now in between each eighth, you're going to create another line but you're not going to worry about connecting them. These are just guidelines because that is where we're going to be placing our star points. So as you can see, my egg is pretty much divided into sixteenths on either side. I'm going to be using my electric Kiska, so I'm putting the wax in. And if you are using a regular Kiska, you're going to want to have your candle handy because you are going to be keeping it warm using the flame. Now we're going to draw in with the hot wax. So we're going to draw in the lines, dividing our egg in half vertically and horizontally. So dividing our egg into fourths using the Kiska. And it's okay if it's not perfect. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourselves. I've taught a few friends how to do pisanki, and 
So many people get really frustrated with this. It is difficult. This is not an easy thing to do. And it can be hard on your eyes and on your back and on your hands. So just try to stay relaxed, use a light touch, and try to be peaceful and enjoy yourself. If you're getting stressed out, it's not worth doing it. The other thing is if you're starting to get pains in your hands or start to feel cramped, that means that you're holding the kiska too tightly. So you want to be careful that you don't burn yourself, of course, because we're using hot wax, but try to loosen up a little bit. Don't be too tense. And now I'm going in and dividing the egg into eighths. Now a lot of mistakes can be fixed. I was looking at my camera and wasn't paying attention, and I actually put a wax line on the 16th line instead of the 8th line. So I keep a small screwdriver nearby and I just scraped it off, but you also have to scrape off some of the shell of the egg. You think eggs are very delicate, fragile things, but they're actually not. They're pretty durable. So now that that's done, we are going to start with the star shape. And that is where the 16th line comes in handy. That's the guideline, so that's where you want to put the point of your star. So you'll see I put a little dot there just to help me out to make sure that I make a symmetrical star. See? Just like that. Now, if this is your first time giving Ukrainian Easter eggs a try, chances are you're going to be having a little bit of a rough time here. But that's okay, you know, it doesn't come easily to most people, and it's not something that you learn overnight. This is an art that takes years and years to learn. And so just take your time, try to enjoy yourself, and try to remain relaxed. Don't be too tense. Another tip is to turn your egg. So a lot of what gives you straight lines and symmetry is moving your egg just as much, if not more, than you move your hand that holds the kistka. We're going to add some curls. So in order to do that, we're going to first draw lines that are parallel to the edges of our star. So just watch what I'm doing. I think watching is easier than explaining. And again, notice how I'm moving the egg. Now, to the top of each of those lines, we're going to add a little curl, a little curly cue. And now I find curls to be difficult to do, but maybe you'll find them easy to do. I find straight lines to be much easier. And curls represent protection. Now we're going to draw in the branches, and the branches represent long life and health. So this is where those 16th lines come in handy, because this is the starting point for our branches. And in the center of the egg, I'm creating a big circle that's filled in, which represents the heavens and the stars. Now moving away from the center of the egg to the outside of the egg, I'm going to trace over in the wax the lines that I'd drawn in earlier. Now going back to the tips of the star, I'm going to draw triangles, and triangles represent the Holy Trinity. So line one, line two, and line three. And that third line should be parallel to the center line that goes down the side of the egg. Now here I realized that my kisco was clumping up a little bit, so I used my wire to just clean it out quickly. 
Now I'm drawing lines inside the triangles, and these lines look like ladders, and ladders represent prayer. So that's it. There is the full pattern on one side of the egg. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of the egg in the exact same way, and then I'm going to put the egg into the die. Now, since this is a beginner egg, we're only doing two colors, so that means that everything that we've drawn using the wax is going to stay white, and everything else that is not covered with wax is going to change colors. So I'm going to mix up some dye. This is some very hot boiling water, distilled water, very important. You get a better quality product. And with a tablespoon of vinegar, distilled white vinegar. And this dye is going to be a beautiful turquoise blue color, but it's a very highly pigmented, highly staining dye. So you want to be very, very careful when you're pouring it into the water. So give it a quick little stir. And once you've made your dye, you need to let the water cool because you don't want to cook your egg. <laughs> All right, so I used a glass jar. If I had plastic, I might have used that instead. But you just want to be careful when placing your egg into the dye so that it doesn't fall and then crack and break because you'll have a huge mess. And I left my egg in the dye for about 25 minutes. But every egg is different. This batik dye really does stain, so you want to watch your fingers when you're taking it out of the dye. And you want to pat it dry with an old cloth. Now pat it dry, don't wipe it. Just be gentle with the egg at this point. I could have left the egg in the dye for a little bit longer for a more vibrant turquoise color, but I really like soft colors. And I thought that this soft blue was really, really pretty. It kind of tied in with a few other eggs that I have displayed right now in my house. But if you want a more vibrant color, just leave it in the dye a little bit longer. So now it's time for the big reveal. There's a couple different ways that you can take the wax off of the egg, but I always tend to do it this way, and that is with a candle. You could do it in the oven as well, but this is just my go-to way of removing the wax. So you want to place your egg on the flame, but just for a little while because you don't want to have any dark marks and you don't want to cook your egg. So you heat the wax this way and then use an old rag to wipe away the hot wax. And there you have it, your very own Ukrainian Easter egg. share the books that I use and have used over the years for designs and inspiration and also gives some um, instruction as well as you're doing your eggs and these books I actually have two of the first one two copies of the first one but these are the books that my mother used and the years on them are 1984 and 1986 so I was just a little little girl at that time but the first one is, this is my favorite one, Ukrainian Easter eggs and how we make them. You see there are so many designs in this book and you really can have a good time with just this book. And the very first design, which is the most basic design that's in this book, is step by step. Very, very easy to follow. The other book that I like to use is Ukrainian Easter egg design book two. And this, again, it tells you about the dyes. It tells you a little bit about the process, but this book is more focused on dividing the egg, and then it shares with you lots and lots of designs. So, book for beginners, book for intermediates. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make Ukrainian Easter eggs pisanki.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions or comments, and please consider sharing this video with a friend. I'm so glad you guys were here and stuck around for this video. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.